Check out, though, this chart of diesel fuel hitting another record high up, more than 75 percent compared to a year ago. BK here says this is one of the reasons the Fed is going to struggle to get inflation under control. What is diesel telling you? Yeah, well, listen, I mean, we're seeing diesel prices almost double this year. Uh, and you're seeing diesel supplies, which we got today at 1030, below the five-year average, significantly below, I think almost 20 percent below. So what's happening here is refiners are out there and they're saying, hey, we got to make some more diesel so we can keep these trucks rolling. But they're pulling that, that oil that they otherwise would have put into gasoline for the summer drive season. So you have these two kind of things going on where prices are going to stay higher in all energy classes. And that's there's nothing that the Fed can do about that. That's a supply side issue. So you may want to raise rates. You could raise rates to 5 percent and it may not impact this at all. So in my view, this is why I think the Fed is probably going to raise a lot more than what people think. And inflation is going to be a heck of a lot stickier than anybody thinks, or at least that the market is pricing in. Right. The Fed can only address demand side right of the equation not the supply side and in fact a lot of the inflation that we're seeing right now is supply side inflation so that is the pickle that the fed is in right and so you know steve just said it the last time the fed raised 50 basis point was may uh, of 2000 and they did not know at the time that they were basically going to hike into a recession they thought the economy was pretty good they were trying to tamp down an asset bubble at the time and when you think about that fed funds was at six and a half percent in 2000 and it went down to one and a half at the lows in that dot-com crash period and then in 07 we were at five and a quarter percent they brought it to zero during the financial crisis. So here we are. We got back to two and a half percent in 2019. OK, we have a black swan event. They bring it to zero. Fine. They screwed up. They just we, we all agree that they just kept on going. And then we had another uh, we had this asset bubble plus inflation. And now mm -hmm. they might have a weakening economy. And so to me, if you think that the S&P 500 down 15 percent and what we just saw this year encapsulates everything we just talked about, it, you think that's it? No way. I mean, it's just not going to happen. So to me, the last two times we saw this, the S&P got cut in half. It went down 50% in, in both instances. Tell me why I'm wrong. It won't, won't do 30. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I think Steve makes some good points. I mean, taking or at least framing 75 in a way that it is a bit more conciliatory to the market, you got to keep in mind, I think people have a hard time shifting out of this QE situation that we've been in for the better part of two decades. Now we're raising rates. We've come out of this accommodative situation with COVID, et cetera. I mean, he makes a point. Why send additional shockwaves to the market? All I'm saying is, given where we are here and now, being that most of the tools are not going to address the issues that we're seeing, the wage, well, it's somewhat wages, but the supply situation that's really leading to a lot of inflationary pressure, the commodity situation that's leading to a lot of commodity pressure, why, hmm, why send additional shock waves? I, I, I'm willing to kind of think on that. My, my line of reasoning is, given that we need to attack this and we're behind the eight ball, why would you put anything out there that refrains you from doing everything necessary or possible to attack this right. and if this and the butt. That was Don't take point. anything off the table, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And maybe he doesn't think he did. Maybe he's like, I don't, yeah. he, I, mean, I don't think he did. I don't think anybody yeah. at this I, table thought he did today, actually. Right. Even just the, the market rally. reacted that as if right. he did. But exactly. I don't feel there's a I don't feel that he did. But that's a really good point, because remember what the Fed's been doing is they have a, been a tremendous job with the communication channel. Yeah. So let's watch over the next couple of days when these Fed governors come out and start saying, hey, wait a second, maybe 75 bips is back on. Then we'll see if this rally has legs. If it doesn't hold then, then I'm with Dan. I have a question to ask here about today's rally, because we saw everything across the board rally, right? Broad-based rally, every single sector on the S&P 500 up 3% and more. Um, commodities also rallied across the board. Mm -hmm. If you believe the Fed, and if you believe that the Fed can engineer some sort of soft landing and tame inflation, should commodities also rally, BK? Should commodities rally? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, you had two things going on today. You had a weaker dollar, right? But the commodity story isn't necessarily a demand story. It's the supply story. So we, right. you know, so on the, the Fed can't control. The Fed can't that. control it. Uh -huh. And also okay. remember, China's closed right now. So all that commodity demand is not even out there, and commodity prices are at this level. So I, I think we've got an issue coming into the uh, coming into the summer.